Hi, I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Magnum Gold Corp, MGI and the TSX Venture Exchange. A 2015 drill program on the LH property intersected several high-grade gold intersections, including 11 meters of 20.66 grams per ton gold. Additional drill targets on the LH property have been identified by a 2018 drone airborne magnetic survey to further evaluate a pyrotite enriched gold bearing system. Please visit our website at magnumgoldcorp.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is market historian Bob Hoy. He's the chief investment strategist for ChartsAndMarkets.com. Welcome back to the show, Bob. Yeah, hi, Jim. I always look forward to our get-togethers. So what are the headlines we're looking at? The corporate borrowing spree continues. What's that all about? Well, yeah, the uh, well, there seems to be an endless bid for bonds that are showing good interest rates. So that uh, bond trading desk for decades have been calling that reaching for the yield. And that shows confidence. And then the other hand, the other side uh, on the business, on the corporate side, uh, it shows ambition. They they want to uh, raise as much money as possible. Who knows? Acquisitions, takeovers. I don't know how much expansion of plant and equipment's going on, but they're still going at stock buybacks, where the company takes borrows money at low prices and buys stocks out of the market at high prices. I mean. The business of a company is to sell goods and services. The business of a company is not to buy its own stock back. So, uh, however, this will fall upon a disaster at some time. And then uh, we see other things. Now, that's party time stuff. And But we got one out of China here, June the 12th. China auto sales just posted their worst month ever. So, you know, that's not dollars, that's the number of cars that are sold, or in this case, not sold. So, the uh, global economy is slowing, and this, of course, shows up in uh, industrial commodity prices. And you recall that we were looking for uh, these to rally out of the dismal December, and... uh, Often base metals can rally out to March. They did. Nice rally. And now they've given up quite a bit. The other one that we were looking for to rally out of Christmas, and actually it was December 26th when our uh, charting got uh, the downside capitulation buy thing on on the S&P, actually, and on crude oil at the same time. So now crude has rallied out to May Nice rally up to the devil's number, 66.60, and it's had a correction down to the low 50s. So if there was a strong economy, uh, these industrial commodities would be uh, very much firmer. Uh, The other one is that uh, in the U.S., the Treasury bill rate, the three months, bill rate is declining very quickly and of course Wall Street is all over it and (laughs) and early in the year there was uh, all the talk was about the Fed would continue to raise rates and we're worried about rising rates and I kind of like to ironically point out that the Treasury bill rate goes up in a boom and so long as the that interest rate is going up, it confirms that the boom is on. And yet, the establishment worries about rising rates. Anyways, so since, um, yeah, the three-month bill reached its high in May and has declined significantly. Now, actually, the longer one, the six-month, it reached its high in December and was declining a little and then more recently declining significantly. But, of course, they have to skew everything around to say that the Fed is going to lower interest rates. But what the truth of the matter, Jim, is that 
the T-bill rate is a market rate of interest, and it, it trades all of the time. And it goes up in a boom, and we did a study. Uh, readers may be interested in it. Uh, going back to the uh, the bubble of, of 1873 with the uh, charts on interest rates and the same thing. So the, um, the interest rates going up, which the establishment worries about, is actually confirms a boom, which is good. Then the uh, when things begin to falter a little, like recently, then the buzz came into the market. Oh, the Fed is going to lower interest rates, and that's good. But uh, and we've got a wonderful uh, quote from that in September 2007 that oh, this is a sure thing, and the stock market will fly. So this is. It's a theory uh, based upon wishful thinking. And as I said, we've taken it back to the 1870s. And on a boom, short-dated interest rates go up. And on the bus, they go down. And the other irony here is that this latest rally in the stock market, is a lot of it's based upon that the Fed's going to cut interest rates. But in the real world, Jim, you get the fastest decline in the T-bill rate at the worst parts of the bear market. So I, I can say that these people who push the story, and it's the establishment, it's very dangerous to kind of push wishful thinking that far and never personally yourself take a look at financial commercial history and say... <laughs> Short dated rates go up at a boom and down in the bust. So there's an, going to be another hard lesson come from this one. And we can guess as to when that's going to happen. Well, often we see lower interest rates in bad times, but banks are not loose with their money then. So I guess the idea is, is that money is, is, isn't as available because they're worried about defaults. So a lower rate doesn't help. Well, that's the T-bill rate, and yeah. that's the quality liquid item. And one of the reasons, Jim, I think it goes down is that uh, when the careful money gets scared and figures, hey, stocks are pricey, uh, real estate's pricey, I'm just going to go park my money somewhere. Well, you, big money has to have elbow room, and the most liquidity is found in U.S. treasuries, you know, one year or shorter. And so it's this urge to park money that drives the T-bill rate down. But um, over on the other side, like the long-dated uh, long bond, the uh, long bond future, it began to rally in, uh, I think it was November, when there were selling pressures on the stock market, and that was the ideal trade, the ideal place to go, so... The uh, long bond was bid up until recently, and it uh, had great momentum and the sequential sell. And now it's working on a MACD sell. So the the long bond price is about to go down, and that means long dated interest rates are about to go up. And then the other one is we mentioned that the corporate borrowing spree continues and. There's been a bid for low-grade corporate bonds, and maybe that's reached its best. So in a financial contraction, you get some wild things going on with the T-bill rate going down because of safety and uh, low-grade corporate bonds going up in yield because people are avoiding risk. But then you always have the problem that the people in the first part of this year who bought risk, and all of a sudden they're hung up with it. So the next few months are going to be very interesting. We'll have more with Bob Hoy right after this. Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, 
and on Frankfurt symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Bob Hoy. Bob, what kind of confidence does small business have right now? Yeah, that one is published uh, regularly, uh, monthly, and uh, the small business optimism, the one that came out this uh, or just last week, index came in at 105. That would be for May, and the uh, the street was expecting 102. So. Small business optimism is good, and it's probably reflecting, uh, you know, the better prices in the stock market and better prices in the bonds. But uh, this is all close to changing. You know, we we really respect uh, seasonal moves in markets, and uh, way it works with us is that when you've got a dismal December. Uh, and everything's oversold and you're getting buy signals, terrific. Then you get positioned and get long. And then you've got the old sell in May and go away. So if you then expect, you know, stock and commodity prices to rally out to March, April, or May, somewhere in there, and then you get the overbought, hey, that confirms. So what we're watching now for now, Jim, is that somewhere after mid-year, um, things can st- change, like the credit spreads, the difference between low-grade and high-grade bonds narrow in a boom because people are reaching for yield and there's confidence that you're going to get your money back. And then it starts to change. So on the credit spreads, we follow the CCC-graded one, it's reversed to widening. And it's given the first breakout on, you know, changing the chart. So that's a heads up. And if you look back at 2007 or 2000 or even further back, it's typically the second breakout in credit spread widening that it is the killer. That was the case in uh, early October, uh, last October. When everything was holding together, crude oil was firm through to October the 3rd, and then it started going down, and the spread started to widening, and then then you had quite a sell-off. Well, actually, the S&P sold off 20%, and some high-flying stocks were down like 40 to 50%. So that was one that was worthwhile not being on the wrong side. So then you've got the other one, the yield curve, which is the difference between short rates and long rates, and it now is no longer supporting the stock boom. So you've got no support from commodities. You've got a warning from the uh, credit spread, and you've got no support from the yield curve. And then typically in any year, uh, you can things turn bad after August. I hate to chuckle at it, but it's just uh, so regular. So the thing to do is to realize when, that it is overdone at the right time, which it is, and then watch for when it's likely to get uh, some pressures, and that would be the fall. So if sometime, say in August, the credit spread does the second breakout that's a very strong heads up for watch out so our advice to equity investors has been to use the rallies to build liquidity because uh, come the fall that liquidity like last fall could could disappear so it's a time to be prudent it's a time to say no matter how good the party is i think i'm going to stand aside from the party and protect what i've got We'll have a listener question when we return. 
I'm Douglas Mason, CEO of Naturally Splendid, symbol NSP on the TSX Venture Exchange. Naturally Splendid is a biotechnology and consumer products company focused on the global cannabis and health markets. Naturally Splendid is expanding distribution in this rapidly growing market with products currently in Canada, the USA, South Korea, Germany, and Australia. To view our comprehensive company presentation and for more information, please visit our website at naturallysplendid.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Bob Hoy. Bob, our question from a listener, assuming that we have seen the top, can the U.S. equity markets decline another 50% or more like previous crashes? Or will the Fed backstop the markets this time around, limiting the decline to a respectable 20% or so? Well, that's the key question. Uh, Actually, I think it was in early October when I wrote that probably that sell-off would be a 20%er, and on the S&P it was. So where are we now in financial history? Uh, The This year's rally, I think, is, is just a blessing in order to people to raise money and get reduce their exposure and then the question comes into uh when do things go bad in the fall and how bad can they get the uh my guess is that speculative stocks the big high flyers and uh they could sell off you know 50 60 percent the S and P, it could be more of a sell-off than twenty percent. Um, and then you got other things on this question: is you can look to a hit in the fall, and then you want to figure out whether it's the start of a bear market. And so there's two aspects to the price decline: the one is on the hit in the fall. And then the other is that if it turns into a bear market, how much would the total decline be? And, uh, well, Jim, we'll be on deck trying to determine that as the opportunities come along. Bob, thank you so much for chatting with us. Good to be with you on our Fridays together, Jim, and look forward to next week. My guest has been market historian Bob Hoy. He's the chief investment strategist for chartsandmarkets.com. If you have any questions for Bob or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.